Hi everyone! I just got back from a month-long work exchange in Hawaii, which means it's been an entire month since I last checked Instagram and deactivated my Facebook. And I gotta say, it feels amazing to be offline and off-grid at a yoga retreat center. But I'm back now, back to my normal life, and honestly, I'm not interested in returning to social media. With a few exceptions, which I'll get into. I feel like I have to rewind a bit to set the stage for what inspired me to make this decision. I joined Facebook junior year of high school, I think, and Instagram freshman year of college. For perspective, I'm 27. In college, I had a toxic relationship with Facebook. I was pretty open about my opinions on controversial subjects and would get into flame wars with people in the comments. Which I don't entirely regret because it was intellectually stimulating and some people appreciated it. But it definitely led to a compulsive phone checking habit. My relationship with Instagram was slightly less toxic, but I do remember getting pissed at myself for wasting so much time scrolling mindlessly. It got progressively worse when they introduced stories. What a time suck. Okay, can we talk about stories for a sec? 90% of the shit people post on their stories is so freaking pointless. I found myself like, skip, 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 skip. It's not that I don't care about you, person I'm following. I just don't care that you're at a concert, watching the sunset, or taking a bubble bath. No one freaking cares. Okay, maybe like two people care. Send it to them directly. I'm glad I never got sucked into Twitter because it sounds like a scary place. I made a Twitter account when I first started this channel, but I quickly realized that because I didn't have a following, posting there was pointless. I had a Snapchat account, but rarely used it, so I deleted it a long time ago. My thought process when TikTok became popular was I didn't want another app to be addicted to. And finally, YouTube. I've been a YouTube junkie since high school. Although many of the toxic aspects of social media apply to YouTube, I still feel that I get a net positive from it. I enjoy the exercise of creating content, so don't worry, I'm not quitting YouTube. For a while, I thought my compulsive use was a problem that I could overcome with diligence and willpower. I thought it was my fault that I lacked self-control. But around the time I graduated college, I remember listening to a podcast with Tristan Harris, and my mind was blown when I learned that my compulsive use was by design. You probably all know this by now, it's not groundbreaking. But in case you're unfamiliar, Tristan Harris was a Silicon Valley tech nerd who quit his job at Google after his demands for higher standards of ethics were ignored. He became a whistleblower, revealing how social media companies manipulate people into spending an exorbitant amount of time on their apps, in competition with each other for people's attention. Because the more time people spend on the app, the more advertising revenue they rake in. It's a basic fact of human psychology that we seek social validation, and social media companies capitalize on this, as well as other psychological mechanisms like operant conditioning. They introduce the swipe down to refresh function, where notifications are purposefully withheld and released in intervals. Sometimes we're rewarded with a notification, aka a hit of dopamine, and sometimes we're not. As Tristan put it, our smartphones are like slot machines in our pocket. I remember being hella disturbed by this and tried to alter my behavior as an act of resistance. Sometimes I would succeed with my social media fast, but sometimes I would fail and get sucked back in. But because I didn't have severe anxiety back then, and I didn't relate to the major issues people would cite, such as feeling jealous and inferior to Instagram models, or comparing my life to another person's highlight reel, I didn't think I had a problem. I thought, oh, well, this person's life isn't perfect, and I overcame my body image issues a long time ago, so I'm good. Like, I knew I had a behavioral addiction, but deleting my account seemed extreme. It wasn't until I developed debilitating anxiety last year that I started to reevaluate. I probably was comparing myself to others to a degree, without realizing it. But it goes a lot deeper than that. It finally clicked when I read Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. The biggest source of my anxiety was probably the decade I spent fragmenting my attention and being too plugged in to the news and other people's lives. I would definitely get caught in the doom scroll loop. But it wasn't just that I was consuming too much distressing content, I was being bombarded with too much content in general. Our brains are not equipped to the information overload we subject ourselves to. One of the main focal points in digital minimalism was this concept of solitude, meaning time spent alone with our own thoughts. 
Social media has nearly eradicated almost all moments of solitude in our lives, which has had a profound effect on our mental health. We need time to process the information we take in, and we can't fully do that when we're constantly taking in more and more information. There's also evidence that excessive media consumption is shortening our attention spans, making us less productive. And I say this as someone who rejects hustle culture and the idea that you have to be productive all the time. Relaxation is just as important as productivity. But the problem with social media is that it's neither productive nor relaxing. It really is just a waste of time. It often promotes the aesthetic of being zen, but in reality, it sucks the zen out of your life. A shorter attention span reduces our capacity to take in long-form content such as books or documentaries. I've always enjoyed reading, but in the 10 years I spent on social media, I found it more difficult to read, and felt that I wasn't reading as often as I would like to. I know I sound like a pretentious boomer, but this is a huge problem. Short-form content lacks nuance. I'm not saying that long-form content is inherently higher quality, but complex topics require depth. This is why I prefer YouTube to other social media platforms. Generally speaking, it takes more thought and effort to make a YouTube video than an Instagram post, so the result is usually more valuable. I'm not looking down on people who post short-form content, especially if they're doing it to raise awareness about social issues. I respect you for doing the work. I'm not saying that short-form content has no place or no value, but there's an opportunity cost to everything. If you spend all your time making short-form content for TikTok or Instagram, you're taking time away from projects that require more time and effort. There's a reason artists tend to disappear from the internet before dropping an album, or hire people to manage their social media accounts. Prior to reading Digital Minimalism, there were several things that held me back from deleting my accounts. For one, I want to grow my platform because I have shit to say, and I thought I needed to share my videos on other social media accounts to grow my channel. Second, I felt activist guilt. I want to inspire others to make positive changes, and by quitting social media, I would be limiting my influence. Third, I want to be reachable. I enjoy connecting with like-minded people all over the world, and I like the idea of staying somewhat connected to friends from the past. Fourth, I didn't want to miss out on the entertainment and amusement that social media provided. Regarding the first thing, I realized as I began to spend less and less time on Facebook that I was punished by the algorithm, and my post no longer got any engagement. For it to remain a useful tool for promoting my YouTube content, I would have to post and engage frequently, and I didn't want to do that. Then I put up a poll on my YouTube community tab asking my subscribers how they found my channel. The majority said a shout-out from another channel, a significant amount said their YouTube recommendation feed, and very few said Facebook or other. This gave me peace of mind that I could delete my accounts without stifling my channel growth. And even if it did, I'd take a smaller channel over the stress of having to stay relevant on all of these apps all the time. As Told by Kenya has a humorous rant on the capitalist nature of social media, which I'll link below. It truly disgusts me that the algorithm demands that you upload constantly and punishes you for taking breaks. Regarding the second thing, I won't deny that social media can be a helpful tool in raising social awareness and organizing. But historically, social justice movements arose without social media. The victories of the women's suffrage movement and the civil rights movement were achieved without social media. If you feel that social media is a net negative for your mental health, you don't need to feel activist guilt for deleting your accounts. You can still access a calendar for local events and stay connected with other activists. There's also the argument that social media hurts social justice movements because it brings out the worst in us. We've become more reactive and hostile towards people who are supposedly on our side. Now let's discuss the last two things, which relate to FOMO. As for being reachable, I realized that if I deactivated my Facebook account, I could still keep FaceTime and Messenger, so that wasn't really an issue. But regardless, do I need to be that reachable? I have a phone number, and I could put my email in my description box. Ultimately, I decided not to delete my Instagram entirely, so you can still DM me there. I just might not check it for several weeks at a time. <laughs> And as for being entertained, of course I'm going to relate this to veganism, because that's what I do here. 
One of the biggest misconceptions about veganism is that going vegan requires giving up your favorite foods and living a life of deprivation. This is simply not the case. There are vegan versions of nearly everything that either taste the exact same or are tasty in their own way. As I mentioned earlier, everything you do has an opportunity cost. For every delicious meal you eat, there is a delicious meal you missed out on. If you think about it in these terms, you're not really giving anything up. You're merely satisfying your wants and needs with other foods that don't cause harm to animals. Same goes for social media FOMO. You're not giving up entertainment or connection. You're replacing social media with other forms of entertainment and connection that don't come with all this extra baggage that harms your mental health. Whenever I talk to people who are interested in going vegan but feel overwhelmed, I stress that it's all about your mindset, and once you shift your mindset, it's super easy to go vegan. Rather than thinking in terms of all the foods you have to give up, think about all the new foods you'll be introducing and experimenting with. Before I went vegan, I'd never had tofu, and I'd never even heard of tempeh. Mock meats and other plant-based alternatives weren't on my radar. This ties into the concept of JOMO, shifting your mindset from the fear of missing out to the joy of missing out. Talk to anyone who has quit social media, and they'll tell you it was for the better. Your quality of life actually improves when you miss out on what's happening online. The more time you spend mindlessly scrolling, the less time you have for processing information to form your own opinion, reading books, and real-life activism, which are a much better use of your time. These activities never feel like a waste of time, whereas social media often does. So you're probably wondering why I decided to keep my Instagram account. At the height of my addiction, merely deleting the app from my phone wasn't going to stop me from opening it in Safari. But honestly, I've gotten so bored with Instagram that I stopped feeling that pull. I only care to check it a few times a month, if that, and I don't feel that this infrequent use is damaging to my mental health. If it becomes a problem, I'll deactivate my account, but I'm too attached to my photos to delete it permanently. YouTube can definitely be a distracting time suck for me, with many of the same negative qualities that other social media platforms have. But that's where the concept of digital minimalism comes in. It's not about eliminating all social media. It's about regaining control over our digital life. By minimizing the number of apps we engage with, we can engage with the ones that bring us the most value and have time left over for non-digital activities. The problem, as Cal Newport points out, is not that social media provides no value, it's that it robs us of our autonomy. The more social media accounts we have, the harder it is to resist their allure. He also advocates for setting strict rules for yourself for how you engage with these apps. For me, this meant deleting the YouTube Studio app from my phone. I don't need to check my video performance and channel stats multiple times a day. As for Instagram, I'll only download the app if I have a specific purpose and let myself browse for 15 minutes before deleting the app again. It's so nice to have the most toxic social media platform, which for me was Facebook, completely out of my life. Thank you so much for watching. I know I'm not alone in feeling this way, and there's so much more to say on this topic, so I'm looking forward to reading your comments. All right, peace out. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no me now How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan, man How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat